Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20, where in this episode, it's going to be a bit different. This isn't going to be our normal recording episode where we're on our adventure, but this will be just a history of Telthania. So, I'm Gage, the Dungeon Master, and with me I've got Clayton, who plays as Blaze. Just me, today. It's nice and quiet. <laughs> Don't deal with any other guys' nonsense. Just mine. So, in this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, how Telthania began. Uh, so, this begins over a thousand years ago, and it begins with an elven pirate named Jinmar, Ironleaf. She was one of the most successful pirates of all time, and her life started out in tragedy. So Doesn't every D&D character's <laughs> backstory start out in tragedy? Honestly, yeah. Like, you're not going to have someone who's happily married and has, like, five happy kids. That's the Has lamest. a perfect job. Go out and be like, I, I feel like fighting a dragon tonight. How about you? I'll be back in two days, Mark, honey. Mark, you with me, Mark? <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Let's do it. I'll be back in two days, sweetheart. I just gotta go slaughter this dragon so we can feed the family for another three months. Yeah. It doesn't work out like that. Either your parents are dead, your best friend died in front of you, uh, you were raised by abusive parents. Your dog dies if you're John Wick. You're a black haired tabaxi who suffered from racism in his home <laughs> clan. Yeah. You, you know, it's always unique, but one shared common trait is that it's tragic as fuck. <laughs> You're not allowed to be happy. This is Dungeon Dragons. And even if you are happy for a while, eventually someone will kill a kid or something like that. Oh, man. Uh, we've had some weird stuff happen in D&D. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways. So, uh, Jinmar Ironleaf. Uh, her parents were killed by a local gang. And after that, she was sent to an orphanage where she was... Uh, Beat, beaten and bullied a lot, and eventually when she was older, like, she was never adop- adopted by anyone, so the lo- one of the local brothels actually, like, bought her. And so that's where she worked for a long time. But eventually after enough time of, time of being abused and just not having a good time, she decided enough was enough. Bro, so, I am straight up not having a good time, <laughs> is what Jinmar said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, her next client who came in was a sh- captain of a ship. And so, in the middle of when they were about to have sex and whatnot, she killed him. And she got her other brothel workers to come with her, and they just stole his ship. Okay, they stole his ship, so they just killed the captain and then they just took it? What about all his crewmates? Her, the other crewmates, some of them were in the brothel as well, so they, like her co-workers killed them too. And then some others were just doing whatever they were doing, but My there goodness. weren't really many on the ship. What a terrible day for that brothel. <laughs> that owner was having a great day. The next morning he wakes up, there's like 10 dead bodies and all of his workers are gone. Yeah. He's like, what happened? <laughs> I leave for one hour. <laughs> Jinmar got the last laugh, I guess. Yeah. That brothel got shut down for sure. <laughs> Sanitary issues at the wazoo and now. So from there on, uh, they work, they pretty much just worked as pirates just stealing from and killing any sailors whom they deemed as corrupt or evil or bad. Pirate with a moral high ground. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So this is mostly like slaving ships, savages, and other pirates. And any time that they attacked a ship that had other slaves on it or anything like that, uh, they asked the slaves to join them in their in their like piracy. The more the merrier. Yeah. So this went on without really much trouble for probably like five years, but eventually a few of the ships that they attacked were had important people or like politicians on them. So eventually a bounty was put on Jinmar's head. And this only annoyed Jinmar even more. So the more people that they sent after, the more that she and her crew killed, and the more people, sh- the more ships she had, and the more crewmates she had to join in the battles i love i love she's just annoyed (laughs) just annoyed (laughs) not really worried about a bounty being put on her head or people trying to kill her day after day she's just like "Ah, not another one of you mercenaries (laughs) and then after a 
like a, a while after they like attacked some ships and they had a break or whatever, they'd always go back to a, a layer that they had actually found on one of the nearby islands and just deposited whatever treasures or people that she needed to like put there for safety or anything like that. And then this went on for another about 25 years, and she still wasn't ever captured, and her layer wasn't even found by anyone. Her crew just grew and grew and grew, and eventually, at one point, a random ship just happened to find the island that she had her layer on and realized what it was. What did she do? Uh, she, no one was actually there at that moment. Well, very few were. Like, Jinmar wasn't there. She was sailing at that point. Mm, okay. Uh, so, the ship that found that island ended up going to, like, the authorities or, like, the king of whatever nearby city or ta- or whatever. What a fucking snitch. And this caused, like, a, him, the leader of that city or country to amass a massive navy army to set sail for that island to try to take her out and take all that she had gained. But when they got there, nothing was left. They just they just ditched? Yeah. No okay. treasures, no people, barely any signs of being, ha- like, habitization on that island. When things get tough, run away. Classic blaze. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, fuck, we're out of here. <laughs> So, by this point, Jinmeyer's fleet had grown to about 200 ships, manned by about 7,000 crew members. 7,000? Yeah. The fu- That's not even a crew anymore. That's a small yeah. city. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. And because they knew that there would only be more and more trouble if they stayed here, they decided to set sail for new land, land that they could name as their own. So, they sailed west for months and months uh, brave in terrible weather, unimaginable monsters, and the occasional des- devil or otherworldly being. Uh, they lost, as they traveled, they lost about 75 of their ships and about 3,000 of their crew members. But they kept on sailing. Jesus. And eventually they came to the island of Larhead. Larhead, okay. Well, that's. Damn, 3,000 people. Holy Lathander. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my God, man. <laughs> So they decided that since this is one of the first islands they'd found since they set sailed, they'd at least stay here for a while before moving on. Yeah. And so that didn't happen. So they stayed on the island for two nights, and then the second night, they were visited by the ghost of an ancient green dragon. A ghost of the ancient (laughs) green dragon, Gage. Okay, okay. And... Just seeing it just scared the shit out of them. And when it began to talk to them, it just scared them even more. And within the next couple of hours, they were already set in sail for mainland. Now, what a wasted opportunity. You know what? That green dragon's not going to hurt you. <laughs> What's he going to do? Phase through you? <laughs> no, man, they should have talked to that guy. That would have been awesome. I mean, haven't you guys... Have you guys fought ghosts in this campaign yet? No. Okay. Never mind that. Apparently they do fuck up. <laughs> they do hurt you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, to be fair, if I saw a green dragon, I would run away. If I saw a ghost, I would run away. So if you put them together, I'd probably <laughs> run away. <laughs> so they ended up sailing into the night to the next island they saw, which was the the island now known as Avranches. Okay. And they, like, just... What this island looks like because it it gives because it's a large rocky outcropping with a lot of area, it seemed like the perfect place as a first town or village to, as like a first defense against anyone who came their way. So they settled here and no green ghost dragons. No green ghost dragons. No white ghost dragons. No black ghost dragons. No nothing. Well, can you really get a black ghost dragon? Uh, kind of a contrast in color there be more like gray i guess <laughs> but then they would just think it's a gray dragon <laughs> <laughs> you must suck to be a black ghost dragon yeah. no one knows you're a black dragon they're like come on man <laughs> fear me uh, so they decide to make a village on this island and build a castle like at the top 
and just settled here for a number of years uh, with Jinmar as the leader of the village as well. And occasionally... No Jin- way, I, I, I thought they would just elect a new leader, <laughs> just randomly. They'd be like, all right, Jinmar, we're here now. Time for the re-election. You know, I like the idea of Ghost Dragon, so let's go see if that Ghost Dragon can be the king here. <laughs> We're tired of your shit, Jinmar. <laughs> you took us on a weird trip. You got 3,000 people killed. <laughs> We're moving. So if, uh, every once in a while, they would go on some expeditions to the mainland. Yeah. Uh, some of them were to settle new cities or like communities on this island, which is how uh, Stillsby and Summersdale came to be. And as well as just to explore... So at this time, it's rumored that they actually found some caves that that had ancient, ancient paintings in them from some other beings that were on this continent before. And did they found this on on ranches? You said right? No, uh, on mainland. On mainland. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they weren't the first people there. Yeah, but they like from the. From their investigation of this continent, they hadn't found any other beings of any kind besides, like, animals. Right. So, like, no humans, elves, gnomes, or anything like that. Uh, and these paintings or cave drawings are apparently of enormous battles between, like, a god and monstrosities of different kinds. Uh, and Jinmar liked these so much that she had them... Uh, like cut off the walls, excavated. Yeah, excavated and brought the like images and cave paintings to her own private collection. Uh, for uh, not for Blaze or anything, but uh, where are these? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that, Blaze or <laughs> <Yeah>. Clayton. <laughs> Tell me where they are right fucking now. <laughs> So no one has ever actually found Jinmar's cle- like private collection of goods or anything. Of course they haven't. And that'd be far too. Convenient. Like every once in a while, some jewel or something like that will come up on the beaches of Avranches, and someone will find it, but they have no idea where it comes from. And there, it was rumored that Jinmar had like millions upon millions of gold pieces worth of treasures. And it just casually floats to shore. Yeah, like the occasional piece. What a, what a shitty hiding spot if, like, over the years. <laughs> well, I mean, if no one's found it yet, then... I guess so, but I mean, yeah. if half of it's floating away yeah. <laughs> during the years. <laughs> well, it's just the occasional piece. I guess Like, so. nothing major, just, like, a few jewels or something like that. Uh, living on Ebronches must be dope. You go for a walk on the rocky beach. You find, like, a diamond worth, like, 500 gold pieces that you needed to revive your kid that someone killed. <laughs> I'm sorry that we killed Cochran. <laughs> okay? Hey, I, I killed Cochran. It was Kaka Carl's fault. <laughs> he just stood there. He's like, yeah, you guys get them. <laughs> that was in the first fight when... Cochran was killed, he was, like, right in the battle. No, Kaka Carl watched until Cochran died. And then he was like, oh shit, I should do something. Who did? No, I, I think he just rolled bad in initiative, and that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. Either way, I held it against him. <laughs> Stupid bird, man. <laughs> hoot hoot, Kaka Carl. Hoot hoot. Hoot hoot. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, after after 150 years of living on the in this... New continent. 150. How old was Jinmar? Uh, Jinmar was probably around 100 when she left. So now she'd be probably 250 or so. Oh, she's not human then. No, she's an elf. Oh, she's an elf. Okay. Just double checking. So about 150 years after. Yeah, sure. 150. I probably changed it between 125 and 150, but who cares? No, it was 125. The point of having an elf is that you can be however old you fucking yeah. want, and no one can say anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm 750 years old. I totally was there that day. <laughs> a la Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Half that cast was fucking there that day. <laughs> you know what? After 150 years, uh, Avranches, Summerseal, and Stillsby were thriving communities, like there was lots of education, love, peace, art, passion, stuff like that. Oh man, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> and then one day, the civilians of Avranches 
saw something. On the horizon, to the east of them, they saw... A green ghost dragon. (laughs) They saw thousands of ships coming over the horizon. And when they were able to look closer, they noticed the same types of ships that they themselves had. So they assumed it was the same uh, people from the other continent. Like that they, they had escaped the... from. Yeah. How determined are you to kill Jinmar to literally fucking sail to a new continent? Yeah, yeah. so they believed they were coming for Jinmar. Who did she kill? <laughs> like, my god. <laughs> she she ended up killing a lot of like major politicians who were super corrupt oh, okay. and stuff like that. That's what happens when you're a superhero. So Jinmar set up defenses and readied the citizens for battle. And not to be taken by surprise, Jinmar initiated the battle. It lasted for three days and three nights, and she was able to send the ships off. How many ships ships did uh, Jinmar have? Uh, at this point, I think it was uh, probably around 250, because she came to have branches with 200. She fought a thousand ships with 250 ships. Yeah. All right. No, that's... A, a branches is also per- a perfect like defense spot. So. Yeah, I, I suppose so. I guess uh, what's his name? King Ulysses said that too. He's yeah. like, no one has ever taken it, and then five minutes later, got his throat cut. Yeah. So <laughs> apparently, he's not quite the Jinmar we had hoped he'd be. Jinmar also had the surprise because they didn't they didn't know exactly that there were people here. Oh, they weren't. Oh, okay, I got you. So five days later, the ships regrouped and attacked again, and this time they were actually able to get to the city, to the land, I guess. And this charge was led by a captain, a human captain named Binthal Avranches. I see where this is going. (laughs) So after five long days after getting onto land, they were able to take the castle and... Uh, kill Jinmar and her most loyal subjects, oh, and they no. took over the town. What a dick. However, he was unable to ever find her stash of uh, personal riches and treasures, no matter how hard he tried. Serves him right. And then, after conquering of Ranches, he was able to actually somewhat peacefully go to Silsby and Somersale, and he was able to talk to the leaders there. Hey, what's up, you guys? I just murdered your supreme overlord. Uh, My name is (laughs) Evranches. You guys should be my friends. I bet that went really well at first. Oh, yeah. At first, they were pissed. (laughs) But then once they got talking, they were able to settle down again because Jinmar, I mean, uh, Evranches told them that uh, they weren't actually here to just kill Jinmar. They came as an escape. Escape from yeah. what? So he told the communities that about ten years before they sailed here, they were attacked from an army from above. So from airships and stuff like that. Airships? Yeah. Okay. From people they from like a species they'd never seen before. It it wasn't anything like the Fardana. Oh I, I knew you were thinking that. Yeah, that grin yeah. on my face gave that yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Uh it was just Another type of humanoid, but they just ha- had a somewhat different look between elves. Airships. And different humanoid looking. Were they invaded by aliens, Gage? No, this wasn't aliens. <laughs> 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 this was from what they assume was not another continent somewhere else. They have no idea where it was from. Close them. encounters from the 5th edition kind. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Thank you. I was up all night thinking about that one. <laughs> so this war against the people from above went on for four years, and it seemed like it would never stop. But then, after an especially bloody battle that took so many lives and there was so much bloodshed, it stopped. There was nothing. Like, no new airships came or anything like that. Everyone on the continent was afraid and anxious and everything like that for anything that could be coming. Captain Marvel came and scared them all away. <laughs> Just never told anyone because she's so humble. <laughs> uh, and there was nothing for three years. But then after the third anniversary of the bloody battle, 
one ship came and it told a message of death. It told that if the country or continent wasn't abandoned within the next two years, then all still living there would be decimated. Shit, okay. Well, I certainly hope they don't come to uh, Talthania now. I mean, we're struggling with Shavada. We haven't even got to the Shardana yet. I don't think we can handle airships. I don't think we can handle aliens. Yeah. So within those two years, uh, enough ships are built to for all, pretty much the entire civilization to escape. So a ton of them, like probably 3,000 of them, if not... no. I mean, uh, probably around 40,000, 30,000 of them left with uh, Captain Binthal of Ranches. And then another 10,000 probably went east, 10,000 went west, and 10,000 went south. So, like, these guys, they they got attacked by airships, came down, ooh, two years, we're gonna fuck you up. And they're like, nah, we're gone. So they leave. So I'm thinking about this in my head. Like, thousands of ships... They're all sailing. And then Jim Mar's like, nah. And he just <laughs> randomly shows up and like decimates a yeah. bunch of them. They're like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> and then uh, there were some people that did say like there were probably around 5,000 that stayed just because they didn't like the their home being decimated or being taken over. So we're going to stay and just get decimated first so we don't yeah. have to watch that. <laughs> That's me. You know what? Go down with the ship slash continent. So no one really knows what exactly happened to these people, whether they were able to fend them off at all, whether they just died immediately or if they just burnt land or whatever they did. So no one knows. I like to think that it was all a joke and like the aliens did it for <laughs> two years and then they just like went on with their lives. They were like super bored. <laughs> And they're like, wow, there's only 5,000 of us. We're not going to last long. You're giving me ideas here. <laughs> Gage's next campaign is going to take place <laughs> two years after that threat from the aliens. I still think they're aliens. I'm going to hold on to that. Okay. Uh, so eventually, so they went like sailing west towards uh, what is now Avranches and Teltania. And they went through so many problems on the way. Well, like, just like Jamar, right? You said monsters, and yeah, devils. Even worse for these guys, though, because oh. there was terrible, terrible weather that just sunk so many ships. And uh, they were attacked by other pirates, merpeople, Kuatoa. Kuatoa, merfolk, Maro. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bullywogs. <laughs> And Come on, who's scared of bullywogs? Come on. They're putting chemicals in the water to turn the friggin' frogs gay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were also attacked by, like, various kraken and other waterborne beasts and dragons. Let, let's stop. Can we tell them about your bully yeah, log campaign? Because that is, yeah. like, so good. Yeah, so in another campaign we ran... Uh, a while ago now. Yeah, yeah. Like quite a while ago. I uh, played a dragonborn ranger who had no social skills. <laughs> Named Balthasar. Yeah, badass name. <laughs> Stupid fucking character. Yeah, so these guys were on a ship sailing around the country, and at one point they came across a ship of uh, Koatoa, I think, right? It was Koatoa. They're like, hey, yeah. we gotta help our friends. They're, they're all gay. <laughs> yeah, and the leader was named Alan Jones. <laughs> Definitely not Alex Jones. I wouldn't mean to do that. In what? Any way. No way. And he told the the adventurers that the elves in, in the city were putting chemicals in the water to turn the bullywogs gay, and that he needed their help. So the adventurers ended up Stupidly. accepting to help. Stupidly and, just went down there, yeah. Uh, so they were trying to create peace between the elves and the bullywogs and Kotoa. This is probably one of my favorite sessions we've ever done. Yeah, me too. Because a friend of ours, Kyler, who's in the campaign, he really, I don't know why, but he was so invested in this. (laughs) 
that he spent literally took an entire session of our our fucking D and D lives to make a party. <laughs> doing air quotes here, a party where uh, he brought the Kuotoa, the gay bullywogs, and the evil elves all together. <laughs> they had to hand in their weapons, and then they all said that the, there's musical chairs, so there's like live music. I think there was like some other games. And for, I don't know, like, what happened with uh, checking for weapons. <laughs> Eventually, like, musical chairs went so fucking south. I think the elf dude won, <laughs> cheered a little too much, so the, the gay bully walk leader stabbed him. Yep. <laughs> All hell broke loose, turned into a giant massacre. I remember my character was so confused, but... I, I got coerced into like murdering everybody, so we started killing frogs, Kuotoa, <laughs> started killing elves. Fucking Kyler's character was like smothered in blood. Yeah. <laughs> I almost died that session, man. Yeah, you did. Yeah, the, I did. The mayor of the Kuotoa, I think, almost killed you. And then Kyler shot me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he shot me. He's like, sorry, man, I didn't want to get in trouble. Doesn't mean you shoot your friend with an arrow. Oh, man. So. I have a lot of fond, fond memories of bullywogs. Yeah. I'm no longer scared of them. <laughs> They're just <laughs> really fucking gay. <laughs> and one of our other players, Brad, was the one who was supposed to be checking weapons at the entrance to the party. Harlow the bar that and, never used any, yeah. never used magic once. Yeah. And I don't think anyone actually gave him his weapon, gave them, gave him their weapons. So. He just, just like stood there naked. I don't know why Brad was so adamant that Harlow was naked, but he said he was naked and that he never looked for weapons. He just said, yeah, you're good. You can go in. So literally every single guest had, but we had weapons. Yeah. <laughs> and it just turned into a giant bloodbath. Yeah. No one was saved. I don't think. That campaign isn't over, uh, yeah. but I no longer think that we can call ourselves heroes at this point. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> We've done well, so many terrible things. Yeah. Like killing that family in the <laughs> underwater, like, village. Yeah. I blame... what Once again, I 100% blame Kyler for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, you were saying... Yeah, this. so anyways, they went through so many encounters that just took down their fleet, and by the time they got to Avranches, they only had 60% of their fleet and people uh, from when they started. And then they lost another 10-15% to 15 when they were battled by Avranches. Shitty journey, basically. Yeah. Uh, but then once they settled here, they, they were able to kind of split everything peacefully. So they were able... Most of the dwarves and gnomes went north to Silsby and settled there. Which is why a lot of the time some of the buildings are have like smaller doorways and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And the, and then a lot of the normal normal sized folk. <laughs> That's fucking racist. That's sizes. That's so racist of age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so most of the others settled in Summer Sale and then uh Everyone kind of just spread out after that, going settling in what other, whatever, what other, whatever other coastal cities, and then like say that ten times fast. Whatever other, whatever other, whatever other. That is three. Just seven more times. <laughs> no. And and settled in whatever other communities are now as a main part of Talthania. So what do you got, Talthania? We got. Uh, I'll just grab the map here. Yeah. You got Stillsby, Summersdale, uh, Avranches, I mean, Mall. We gotta go to Mall. 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 Stoneholm, Coor. Is that Coor? Uh, where's that at? Yeah, I think Coor, Coor. right? Yeah. yeah. Halsworth, Lassan, I, Igor, Sten, Son, Lore, Saint, Cornell, Aragon, Arist, Clouth, Eel, Chun. Iraq and clean. Honestly, though, Cleon. Oh, Cleon. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the sorry. ink made it look like an yeah. uh, Honestly, I kind of want to go to Larhead now and see this ghost green dragon. Yeah. I think. Uh, actually, you know what? You probably had a plan for that, didn't you? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't let anybody, any other guys. I, I don't want Tony, Duncan, or <laughs> Seb, or Zach listening because I got now. I can feel like I actually do know yeah. the history, and it's just like Clayton rolls a sixteen and just suddenly no shit. 
Yeah, so that's the history of how Teltania got settled. And the next episode we'll release will be another history episode. It'll be of the history of the war against humans. After that, we'll most likely go back to our regular scheduled programming. If everyone else gets their shit together. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, thanks for listening. And this is Nat20. Bye-bye.